Hello and welcome to our post-match show after our defeat against Birmingham City. We're joined by Cameron Jerome, former uh, Birmingham City striker, and Nico Vassen, former Huddersfield Town goalkeeper. How are you both? You okay? Great, thank you. Good evening. Good. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Uh, Nico, obviously a disappointing result for Huddersfield Town. What, what was your take on the match? Well, the match itself it wasn't really, uh, not of a really great quality, to be honest. Um, Birmingham is a difficult side to play against, hard to beat. Uh, don't, don't really play uh, as you would like them to see play, but uh, thought the, the first half was more or less 50-50. Um, but then with a couple of substitutions in the second half, I thought Huddersfield were taking the game. Uh, create some chances, equalised, uh, deserved to equalise. Uh, but then they gave the game away because of uh, yeah, uh, defensive um, mistakes, unfortunately, which also were uh, uh, the, the call of the first goal. Uh, they conceded uh, it's sloppy defending, but there were some, some defensive laps in the game. But all in all, it was uh, a game that should have been end, uh, ended in a draw. It was two sides, wasn't it, Cameron, with completely opposing styles of football. Uh, and, and ultimately, after Birmingham City went ahead, the game became even harder then, didn't it, for Huddersfield Town? Yeah, um, obviously, after a bright start from Huddersfield, uh, you know, moving the ball fast across the, across the back line, nice, crisp, uh, sharp passing. Um, Birmingham obviously didn't really know how to handle that at the start, and it was obviously in a, a very organised defensive shape. You know, as as Ita Karanka has his teams, you know, well drilled and well organised. And you know, like uh, Nico touched on there, it was um, it was actually <clears throat> an interesting thing actually because of the fact that Huddersfield was so bright in terms of trying something different from the set plays uh, because of the size of Birmingham and, and obviously a lot of teams in the Championship. So I thought it was actually quite a positive thing what they was trying, you know, with the short corner and obviously it just didn't quite work for him at that particular moment. And uh, Sanchez, I think it was who drove up the pitch and, and drew the foul from Bakuna and it's just, you know, a set play, which obviously you'll be disappointed in uh, to concede a set play. And um, yeah, obviously Birmingham made it very difficult um, up until the first, to the first 45 minutes. And then obviously second half, I thought the introduction of Pritchard, especially play, playing between the lines and obviously O'Brien, coming on as well, it had that, you know, that impetus in terms of the forward runs and uh, faster balls forward through the lines, which Huddersfield obviously are going to need to break a team like Birmingham down. And, um, you know, thought the, the equaliser was coming. It was a long time coming. And it, it looked like actually a couple of minutes after that, like they could have gone and pinched it. But, you know, a mistake in the middle of the park and, you know, Birmingham obviously broke and got the counter-attack goal. And, you know, that's football sometimes. I suppose the, the winning goal, Birmingham's winning goal, came due to the fact that we were just pushing so hard, weren't we, to, to try and find that winner, to try and find that second goal. Is that a case as a team, Nico, using your experience where you just have to kind of take a minute and, and keep that mentality, keep that calmness? Yes, uh, I suppose. So after the equaliser, you felt that the, the, the Huddersfield, the, the town team, were like uh, feeling that they could win this game. And because of that, they, they, they lost a bit uh, their shape at the back and that's why they conceded the second goal. Uh, you're rightly in saying, listen, lads, let's kill off the game. We take a point home and, and we're happy with that. But when you're on the pitch and you feel you can win the game, uh, you feel that you're stronger than them, uh, you're pushing them back. Um, you can understand that the, 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 the guys are trying to get those three points. But again, experience on the pitch, which there is, should have said, like, listen, uh, let's keep our shape, let's keep that point for sure, and then we'll see what happens next. But, uh, yeah, it's a sad, sad way to lose a game like that. Because it was, it was an undeserved defeat, wasn't it, Cameron? Yeah, totally. On the balance of play overall, uh, especially in the second half, there was only one team in it. And like I said before, it was a matter of time before the equaliser was... Uh, was gonna was gonna come uh, an excellent uh, strike from the free kick from Mbenza in that, but um, like Nico said, then you know there's, there's leaders out there in the pitch where you know although you feel like you have the advantage and you are pressing on for the winner, it's a it's a hard one really because you know you, you can sort of sense it, you can smell it on the pitch, you can sense it's coming. And Birmingham was shot and it was gone, it was off off their feet. You know you could see that for 
for most of the second half. And um, it's just a, it's just a lapse of concentration. Uh, it was caught, you know, quite expansive. Um, and obviously the balls come through the middle of the pitch. Uh, Jukovic has done well to sort of hold it up. I thought he had a big impact when he came on. He sort of changed the game. All the substitutes had a had a big impact in my opinion. But um, him so for Birmingham in terms of getting them up the pitch. Um, obviously Leko with the support run, good strike, and then you know as a good forward he's just followed it up. So it is a sucker punch. It will be hard for take for the boys. But you know the games are coming thick and fast at the moment. So um, you know it gives them an opportunity Saturday to make things right. I think. And you've both, I'm sure, played in in games similar to this where you've dominated the ball, you, you've got back in and, and you, you lose, uh, obviously, at, at the end. As, as players, what do you have to do differently or how do you how should Huddersfield Town have, have played in that second half to stop this from happening? I don't think they could have done much more, to be honest with you. I think, like I said, it's just a lapse of concentration and the way they're going to play is going to sometimes uh, cause their own problems in terms of being expansive, uh, pushing bodies high up the pitch. Obviously, you see Pippa and Toffolo pushing right on, um, trying to pin their uh, back line in. And it just, it just sort of, it can happen in football. I mean, it was a breakaway goal. Um, fair play to Birmingham for for having the energy to still get up the pitch at that period of, uh, of, of the game. But um, yeah, it, it can happen. It's a breakaway goal. I think they'll put it down to that. I think overall Huddersfield was the much better team uh, to control the game, uh, you know, with with good passing and, you know, good patience. Um, so I think there's a lot of positives to take from the game. I think they can, you know, on the journey back up, they reflect on it. And tomorrow when they're in for the warm down, they reflect on it and go, you know what, we've not actually played bad, but ultimately we've not got the results. So sometimes it's a, it's a case of sort of, you know, just, just tweaking things here and there just to manage the game and see see games out. Because, you know, a, a point at Birmingham is not a bad result sometimes. Yeah, yeah I agree. I, I, especially from the manager's point of view, I think you take a lot of uh, the way the second uh, the team performed the second half. You know, they took the game to them. They they were bright, they were positive. The substitutions were, were spot on. Uh, there, was some, there was some more creativity. There was more pressure. They won the second balls. So they, they, they did what you expect them to do. And then it's, uh, like, like I said before, it's sad to lose the game in the end, uh, in that matter. Uh, so, uh, but like uh, Cameron says, it's the, the games are coming thick and fast and the second half should be an encouraging uh, sign uh, to carry on the next couple of games uh, to, to, to get the points in. And I'm sure, Cameron, you, you spent a lot of time uh, studying Huddersfield Town's front three. When a game is like that and you've got players with athleticism, speed, power, in terms of, uh, obviously, Fraser Campbell, Josh Caroma and Adama Diakabi. How difficult is it for them to, to find space and create space and, and opportunities for themselves when you are against a team like Birmingham that have got pretty much 10, 11 men behind the ball? Um, it's a good question, actually, because I think sometimes... Um, <laughs> It can dictate space can dictate by movement and and speed of the ball. I think the way Huddersfield are playing, the, the style of football they're playing, you've just got to work the back line and hopefully someone switches off and you know keep making the forward runs. Obviously, it helps when you've got the full, um, the wing backs, the full backs, Pippa and Toffolo, like I said, uh, bombing forward, and then obviously the boys interchanging and rolling from outside to inside. You see uh, Diakabi doing it quite well, but a fourth friend uh, showed his experience tonight and he marshaled them quite well and didn't really let him get. Too much of a run on him and be able to use his pace. Uh, Fraser was bright, I thought, without really impacting the game. Um, so it, it was quite difficult in terms of the boys being able to run in behind and use the attributes. But um, ultimately, I think when when that happens, you have to sort of make adjustments to the game. And I think um, they did that with the, the substitutions in terms of Pritchard and O'Brien coming on. I thought the interchange and and the one-two and the slip passing in the final third um, it improved a lot in the second half. And obviously, you know, that's where the goals come from. Nice little play from Pritchard and nice feet from from Pieper at the edge of the box to, to draw the foul in. Yeah, again, I agree with Cameron. It's, it's, uh, what, what is important when you play against the team that, that, you know, drops back so deep that you need to also... You know, how does Field Town have got three men up front who are lively, who can, who, uh, who can decide the game, who've got an action, who've got finishing ability? But also what happens behind them, you know, uh, and that was lacking the first half, in my opinion, the, 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 the need pass and somebody who uh, brought creativity behind them who could put them in front of or get, get some, some uh, split uh, defense splitting pass, for example. So that was lacking the first half. And 
And I thought, especially Pritchard brought that to the team in the second half where uh, he, he looked for the ball, he, he, tr he tried to be bright and, and, and create something. And, and, uh, and that's, that, that, that changed the game. And, and, and Campbell was more in the game, uh, was more dangerous. Yakabi was more, although he was a bit, I was a bit unlucky in his decisions uh, once he was on the ball. But uh, there, was, there was a spark in the team and, and that was lacking the first half. Uh, and, and obviously, Nico, we, we've touched upon the goals that we conceded, but from a goalkeeper's perspective, there wasn't really much that Ben Hamer could have done about either, was there? No, no, no nothing to do. I think the, the first goal was set piece. It was a great header. Uh, you can have question mark about defending uh, on that one. Also question mark on giving the free kick away too easy as well. Uh, but there was nothing Ben could do about that. And the second goal was uh, like a... Uh, a great shot on, on the bar, and then and then uh, the striker put it away very neatly. So uh, no, for Ben there was nothing more he could do about that. No. It's a difficult kind of game, that isn't it for for a goalkeeper? I'm sure Ben will be off the pitch really frustrated because ultimately he's not really had any other saves to make. He's just had to pick the ball out of the net twice. Yeah, it's it's, it's one of them. You know, it's uh, it's one of them. You have to be focused for. Like 99 minutes tonight, uh, and then uh, make sure you you take uh, or save the ball that, that that comes near you. But unfortunately, it was uh, two unstoppable goals, and and, and uh, yeah, he will definitely come off the pitch with a very frustrated feeling. Um, you know, a goalkeeper wants to keep a clean sheet, wants to wants to take the points home, especially away from home. It would be nice, but uh, but when you don't have a save to make, but still got beaten, uh, get uh, two goals uh, in the back of the net, it's disappointing. And we have to talk about Huddersfield Town's goal, obviously. A real sign of quality, wasn't it, Cameron, from Isaac and Benza? Yeah, definitely. You know, just from the way he took control of the free kick situation, he looked really confident. Um, obviously, I was watching his run-up and, you know, he was fully concentrated uh, until the moment he stripped the ball. So, you know, brilliant, brilliantly executed, great technique. And, you know, um, he was, you know, it was obviously coming, the goal was coming there and, it's just a shame they couldn't hang on from it, but you know, from from his perspective, he'll be he'll be happy to get his second goal of the season, and you know, hopefully, um, you know, maybe he's in the manager's thoughts for the weekend now. You know, so that goal can obviously give him a little bit of confidence, and you know, they're going to need players like that. And like Nico said earlier, uh, the front three, front four players, whoever's playing in those sort of positions, uh, they are game changers. With you know, moments like you know, like that, with the piece of quality he produced from the free kick there. Because at that point in the match, it was. Obviously, a really significant time. There was a long delay, over two and a half minutes, I think, before uh, Isaac actually took the free kick. That can play on your mind, can't it, as, a, as an attacker, when you're over an important situation like that. You have to be really mentally strong not to let that affect you or let you change your mindsets or get things in your head, don't you? Yeah, certainly. I mean, you see, um, you know, especially from penalty situations, dead balls and, you know, obviously free kicks, uh, especially when there's been a break in play for an injury or, you know, if the referee's attention to something else. And, you know, obviously it was a long period of time where where Clayton was down. So, you know, even more so, it was even even more um, well executed in terms of the concentration and the technique because, you know, he's had that long delay between um, the far being given and obviously being the free kick being actually taken. So, you know, I, I take my hat off to him because it was a wonderful strike. And you said it there, Cameron. I mean, it, it, he was so focused on taking it. I think earlier in the season, uh, Isaac wanted to take a, a free kick in a similar situation, but uh, one of his teammates took it. Uh, I suppose, Nico, for, for people on the pitch, it, it's really key, isn't it, that to have that confidence, that belief in your own your own ability, even though he'd only been on the pitch, what, I think uh, maybe just under 10 minutes? Yeah, but when when you have the belief, you can you can you can hit that ball, and you you, you think you can you can make something out of it. You no, know, normally two or three players are fighting for the ball to take the free kick, you know. So, uh, it, it, which is a good sign to me. But uh, Isaac is one of the players. Uh, obviously, I know him because he's uh, he's Belgian, and uh, if there's one thing he has, he's got like a, a, a good good strike and. Um, uh, he's claimed the ball. He's had time, like you said, to 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 uh, to concentrate on on his kick, and uh, well, it was a terrific strike. And I, am I right in saying, Nico, this is the first time you've watched Huddersfield Town for a, for a while? Um, what what was your reaction of 
the style of play and, and Town's performance on the whole? Well, to be honest, the first half I was uh, a little bit, uh, you know, uh, wasn't really over enthusiastic, but it had more to do with the way that Birmingham played rather than uh, than than, uh, than Huddersfield Town. You know, you're you're playing away from home. You would expect the home team to come at you and then and, and, and give give you a hard time, but it was the contrary. Uh, Huddersfield were at ease. They were hardly ever, ever troubled, uh, only on set pieces. Uh, but I was very pleasantly surprised with the way they took second uh, and they played the second half. Uh, you know, uh, substitutions were spot on and. and I saw a team that um, that deserved more than that they got today, and then uh, uh, I enjoyed the second half, especially from other steel Oxford Times point of view. And I guess Cameron, uh, considering Birmingham, obviously no fans there. But I can imagine if there were fans at, at St Andrews, I wonder how that would have played in in terms of their performance. Whether they'd have come out as the home team, like Nico said, a little bit more instead of playing back I, I just wonder how that would work in terms of the balance of play um yeah I think obviously with the with the supporters not being there obviously it plays a big part in things in terms of you know you, you've seen it across the leagues the amount of goals there is and the amount of mistakes and the things that are what's happening throughout the game but um yeah I think the, the fans I mean any set of fans wouldn't accept that from a home team in terms of just sit, sitting back and just sort of um, you know, allowing the team possession of the ball. But what I would say is that's Ita Kranker's style. You know, he's done that, at, you know, at Middlesbrough and at Nottingham Forest. That's his style of play. Um, he likes, you know, teams who are well drilled, well organised. And, you know, they looked a threat after the goal. You know, like Nico said, from set play, set, set plays, that was the only way they was going to get the goal. But after that, I think Hogan went through one-on-one, -on -one, which he should have probably done a little bit better with. And, you know, they looked quite... Um, quite front foot, especially with the press. I thought they pressed Huddersfield a little bit better and they, they engaged a little bit better after the goal. Maybe the, the goal, you know, made them grow, grow in confidence sort of thing. But um, yeah, first half, I thought Birmingham actually ended on top in terms of, you know, they had that belief once they got the goal and they had a little bit of confidence in the game. They sort of, uh, you know, sprung some counter-attacks and they got up the pitch a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you said it earlier quite nicely when... Obviously, Carlos Corbran comes to the club. We, we put a string of good results together uh, two or three games ago. Obviously, now we, we've hit a slight bump in the road, but patience was always kind of the key term to this, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think um, with Carlos coming in and being a new appointment and obviously changing the whole philosophy of the way the football clubs run and the style, what he's trying to implement on the team, I think patience is the, is the key. And I think it's a transition year. Um, I think that's been well documented. Uh, so I think, you know, a lot of fans will be pleased in terms of the style of football they're seeing at the moment. They'll be, they'll be quite content with with uh, with the results also. Um, you know, just, it's just one or two things, like you say, tightening up in, in certain areas and maybe game management and little things like that, which is uh, costing them points here and there. But over, overall, you'd say, you know, the performances, you know, compared to last year, you know, they've been, you know, uh, a, a big improvement. So that's only... That's only compliments to the to the coaching staff and the work what they're doing at the training ground and the players for taking the information on board because you know obviously there's a lot of players who haven't played that style of football before so uh, it's a lot to take on so it's it's all sort of credit to everybody they, they've been a fantastic job and you know long may the, the success continue because obviously when you you developing a new style of play you've got a new head head coach a short pre season not that I'm looking for excuses but you're always going to be learning aren't you Nico in in these first kind of 10 games in a league under a new head coach, adapting things that worked, looking at things that didn't work, and then building on from that platform. You know, with the championship, it's, it, it's a long season, plenty of games. Uh, it's maybe a sort of a hiccup now, but from what I've seen today, it's very encouraging, uh, very encouraging signs for, for, for the future. Uh, the manager needs time. He tries to be positive. Second half was proof of that. You know the way they, they want to play, uh, and I full credit. Uh, I like to see a manager come and uh, have an idea about football, try to implement it on the team. It needs time. Uh, sometimes results go your way. Today they don't. But in the long term, I would say let Carlos do his job, uh, and it will come. It will come right. And then just before we finish, Nico, what are what are you up to uh, nowadays? Well, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I, 
can't play anymore. So, uh, you know, I run a, an agency here in Belgium. Um, I've done it now uh, together with, with my business partner. We run it now for uh, almost 12 years. And it's going quite well. Uh, although, you know, times of football are changing. Uh, the corona has hurt a lot of clubs, especially also in Belgium, and I suppose in England as well. But uh, question marks over, over what the future will bring financially, business-wise. But, um, but so far, so good. It's been an interesting year, last couple of years. Um, so I have some good connections in, uh, in England uh, uh, with the people uh, I played with, uh, the manager I, I played under. So, so uh, yeah, it's been it's on the other side of the of the of the pitch, but but it's another uh, perspective of football. Uh, it's a it's a shrewd world. Uh, there's nothing better like being a football player, <laughs> but uh, at least we're still involved in football, and uh, and, and, and that's a good thing. Uh, how how are you finding the the balance from obviously not playing anymore and, and going into work? Well, like I said, like you know, you miss you miss obviously the band, the dressing room, uh, being outside on the pitch, you know, doing your stuff. You know, it's, it's uh, when, when you've been a professional football player that that's that's the best thing in life. Uh, if you can go, you don't call it you go into work. You go into do what what you what, what you love to do. And that's uh, that, that's obviously I've been very fortunate to, to uh, just like Cameron to, to to be a professional and to have been able to do it day in day out for a number of years. Uh, watching football is differently. Uh, doing the business part of football is differently. But as I said, like you're still involved in football. You see a lot of football. You see styles of football changing. You know, uh, more teams are playing from the back. If you would have said that 10, 15 years ago in England, they would have said you were you're crazy. Just put the ball up front, you know. But those things have changed. Though, though. So, and I think it's for the good. You know, it's uh, it's interesting to see. Um, it's also interesting to see how how the young players, how youth players, are being coached and trained. Uh, and in comparison, like we were in those days, so it's, it's much more scientific. It's much more looked after, the infrastructure is a lot better, the, the, the gear and materials are all better. So it's all evaluating, but but uh, no, it's it's still great to be in football, uh, whatever way, but uh, nothing like playing. Yeah, I can, I can imagine it. Cameron, obviously you are still playing at the moment. MK Don's a, a good result against uh, Wigan on Tuesday evening. How, how, are you finding, how are you finding it there? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, obviously it's been, it's been brilliant for me being able to go down there and um, you know play under um, a manager that I played with and shared a dressing room with. So um, that was a key factor in in my deciding of, of of going there. And you know they play a similar style of football to to Huddersfield at the minute. You know we're playing quite expansive. We play really good football. Uh, move the ball from the back, and it's you know at this stage of your career it's enjoyable. You want to be enjoying every moment. Like Nico said, we're so fortunate. Uh, to have the opportunity to be a professional, and I, you know, I see it as as a, a sort of a challenge. You know, going there and 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 showing everybody, you know, especially like um, you know, with, with what's going on at the minute in terms of the age sort of thing, where you know people are sort of going away from the tried and trusted, experienced players and and having more younger sort of um, players with potential as you know, uh, as a business model. You know, people are sort of uh, begin to play a trading and. And sort of uh, trying to find that diamond in the rough, so to speak. So, uh, from my perspective, it's 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 gone good. I'm you know four or five games in now, so I'm just sort of finding my feet. And you know, like you say, last night was a was another positive result. So it's it's all it's all positive down there at the minute. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully, uh, Huddersfield Town will, will get back to winning ways on Saturday against Millwall. Cameron, Nico, thank you very much for for joining us and, and helping us analyse what was a disappointing result at Birmingham City. Thank you.